so humid today. It's too hot in this garage, doing work, bloody baking. Welcome to the hot, sticky garage of hell. The small, tiny garage, which is too hot, too many jobs to do, and they're all on the deadline, because I'm all getting ready for a track day on Monday. If you saw the last video I did where I fitted uh, the Translogic Quick Shifter to the bike, I'll put a link to that up here. Um, take a look at that. This is the part two. In this video, I'm going to be fitting the Heeltech data logger. Now, this is a really interesting bit of kit which Heeltech UK sent me. Here it is. That is the unit itself. And then, of course, you've got a load of wires and, and whatnot and, and a GPS sensor as well. So that's the kit. What's so great about this data logger is you don't need a special dashboard. You know, it all works on an app on your phone. So you can have this as a lap timer, obviously data logging in real time and have the phone mounted to the bike. That's one way of doing it. Or, you know, with a data logging system, you really need to review the data after you've done a few laps. So you can also then, of course, load the data up onto your phone and go through and analyze at the track. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fit it now. And then as a second part to this video, or maybe even within the same video, we'll go through and uh, show you how it all works from the app and what sort of information you can capture and all, everything all about it, because this is a really, really interesting bit of kit. Let's get in there, let's get uh, hacking, and let's get this installed. I'm not an old hack, Mavis. the instructions for the GSXR 750 so a nice little PDF of everything in so uh, yeah let's start at the beginning secure bike on a stand remove the seats I've done that because everything's there. and the fuel tank and the airbox I'm already I've done it I've done up to this point so that's handy connect the power red wire to the orange and white wire of the ignition coil so yeah so you obviously get that's to pick up that's for the rev pickup that'll give you a rev pickup so we've got a splice in, well, we don't have to, like I say, you can do as much as you want here, but splice into the speed sensor connector. You can option the splice into the gear position cable, so you can also tell you what gear you're in. You can connect into the pink wire on the engine coolant temperature to also give you your coolant temperature. That's quite useful, I think I'll have that. Throttle position to show you what, what position of throttle you're doing around the, around, the, around the circuit. I'm having that as well. Option the oil pressure switch. So that just will tell you if your oil pressure came on. I'm not so worried about that one. The, the unit in the back of the bike and the little GPS sensor on the back of the bike. So uh, yeah, it's Splice City. So actually it doesn't look too bad, the installation. It's just a case of identifying wires, splicing into them and then making everything look neat and tidy and mounting all the units at the back of the bike. So I'm gonna crack on with that now and we definitely will have time to explore this app Best part of this video. Ooh, exciting. Let's get an installation done. So what do you get in the box? You get the uh, wiring harness with all of the different connectors you know, and the terminal block which plugs into the main unit itself. That's the main unit itself. The GPS uh, business there. And uh, and the uh, oh, 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 oh. and the actual GPS module as well. So that's what you get with the kit. That's all your bits and bobs and enough connectors to splice it. So it's the connectors where you put around the wire and you crimp it and they're filled with gel. So uh, you know, they're not my favorite way of connecting. Ideally you could cut in solder in, and, but I'm probably gonna use those just for the sake of speed and, and quickness of the installation. Oh. I'll use these for now. Maybe I'll redo it all later on and solder. I bet you don't do that. Yeah, no, I know. I, I won't make this, that's wishful thinking. So first of all, we've got to connect into the coil pack, which will give us the rev. So uh, as I've got a quick shifter on this already, I've already got all the piggybacked cables here. So I could probably connect into one of the piggybacked cables to avoid you know, connecting into my actual bike loom. So how you connect these cables is you slide the little uh, provided connector over the top and just push that in and that and then you push the wire you're connecting to into the other little slot it's all gel filled and take the little connector splicer and uh, push it in by hand first of all now that little bugger's trying to shift then 
I'll get them out again. Do that again. Your all fingers and thumbs. Push it down by hand. Make sure everything's in. That's in. That's on. And then connect down. You fold that over. And that's it. That's one connector done. There we go. All installed. I've also done the uh, track days at Donington as well. So let me take you through the app, how it works, um, and look at the data I've captured from Donington. I've got a bit of onboard footage as well, which I took at Donington, so we can look at the onboard footage in compared with the data which was captured. Unfortunately, at the moment, I couldn't find a way to overlay the data from the app, because you can export the data, I couldn't find a way to export it and overlay it on any videos you took. I think maybe that'll come later on, or perhaps, you know, I don't know what software to use to do that, but I couldn't find anything out there which could overlay the data onto the video, but I'm sure, I'm sure that'll come a bit later on. So first of all, the module connects to the bike via Wi-Fi. So the actual, it's got its own Wi-Fi, so you basically connect to the bike with the Wi-Fi, and as I mentioned, you can use this data logger as, as a dashboard. So you can have all this on the screen as a dashboard. So here we go, this is the dashboard section. I was worried that when this is mounted up front on the bike, obviously I've mounted the actual module at the rear of the bike, whether the Wi-Fi would be stable enough um, or it would keep dropping out. I've had no problems with the Wi-Fi dropping out with this and it's instantaneous and there's no lag. So, you know, this, this is basically the, the dashboard you can have with your lap times, all of that sort of stuff. And you can also sort of customize this as well, you know, choose sort of rev limits and all of that sort of thing. So there's quite a lot you, you can do with this. Um, if we're going into sort of the data analysis, this is all the sessions I've done on the bike. So if we look at my Donny last, is my last session I did at Donington. Let me open that one. And basically it loads up all the data. So on, on, if you first of all we go to the map, the GPS will build you the circuit. And if the circuit's one of the predefined circuits that the app knows about, you know, it will display it here. So Donington Park, you can also select your tracks. So you've got all these tracks preloaded into the unit. Obviously, if, if you're on a track which isn't preloaded, don't worry about it. Because it's GPS, you can get it to calculate and, and you know, it can work it out for you, basically. But Donington is one of the preloaded apps. Here we have the different laps I did during that session. You can see the best I did was a 154. Bear in mind it was 36 degrees at Donington. It was hot. I probably could have gone quicker but I wasn't really pushing the bike Excuses. all myself. But a 154 isn't 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 too shabby. Also shows at the top that you've got different sector times. So if we go to the map it does a breakdown of of the sectors. So we can zoom in here so you can see the little yellow dashes of the different sectors and that relates to the different sector time. So based on what I did in that session, I could have achieved a 153 using the, see the green blobs here, using the best of the different sessions, if you see what I mean. So I could have achieved a 153 lap based on what laps I did the best sectors in. So it can give you sort of your predicted best. So if you had a bit of traffic, you know, on one of the sessions and you got slowed down a little bit, you can give you sort of a, predict, a predicted best lap time. But anyway, if you click on the best lap, that 154, it will display the data for that lap. Now, if we go back to the map view, and I just zoom it out a little bit slightly like that, um, the red blob on there is where I am. And if I scroll along, look, you can see, you can see the lap unfolds basically. So the slightly highlighted data, you can zoom in on the data, is, um, the lap I just did. So at the top you've got the revs, I've then got the speed, the GPS speed and also the throttle position. So what you can sort of use this for is to look, you know, as I cross the start line here you can see I was at 100% throttle, came off the throttle sharply and uh, the speed started to drop. What I haven't set up is uh, any sort of brake. What would be quite useful, I think, is to connect it into the brake switch so I could just see when the brakes were applied. Obviously, you're not going to be able to see sort of pressure of the brakes, but you'd be able to see when the brake was... Because you can, it's got spare slots to connect into whatever you want, and then you have to configure the different things. So I could quite easily connect this into my brake system to show when I started pressing the brakes. But you can see throttle dropped off more or less instantaneously. I, I rolled off it a little bit, and then uh, speed started dropping quite quickly as I went into the first corner. And if we zoom out slightly and move across, you can see the speed went down to 49 and then I went back on the gas again 
not not hard on the gas. I sort of hesitated and then went to gas and then was well only 94% throttle. I didn't go full throttle. That's the big right hander. And then uh, you know then I come off the throttle again. Quite I come off the throttle quite quite a lot there. Look. And also dropped down to zero and then went on it again. So why I did that I can't remember. Was there someone on track in front of me? And then I came off the throttle again, sort of coasted around. So you can see you know, exactly what I was doing with the speed, what I was doing with the throttle, and you've also got the revs there as well. So you can see that, you know, why did I roll off the throttle here? You know, <laughs> and if I had the brakes, it'd be quite interesting to see when I was braking and stuff. So I think I will connect into the brakes as well. But there we go. I mean, that, 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 is, the lap, that is the data logging. So, and there's, there's several spare slots on this. If we go into the the uh, what they call the channels you can see what so I've got battery voltage and satellite GPS which I'm not displaying here you can also change the color of these things if, if you want to just change the color you know but you can add it into whatever you want and you configure whatever you want and I want to get the gear indicator working and uh, also into the brake system would be quite useful but as you can see there's a lot of data here as much as you want there to be the good thing about this system is you don't have to have your phone on you. You know, the data logger will, will start recording. You can choose if you want it to start recording when you go up at a certain speed or just to start recording every time you start the bike, but you don't need the phone on you. You know, you, you can then just download the file from the bike using the Wi-Fi when you come into the pits or whenever you want to download it, you know. Um, so, so you don't have to have the phone with you. You can just use your phone to display the information. So there we are. Thanks very much for watching. I think the unit is, I think the unit is about £300-ish. Um, installation is pretty straightforward, but it's just a case of identifying the right wires on your bike. So you will definitely need the wiring diagram to identify the right wires. I was lucky Heeltech had full instructions for the GSXR 750, which was identical to my bike. The wiring colours were exactly the same as my bike. So I'm not sure what other uh, instructions they have for what other sorts of bikes, but they're not going to have everything. So you're going to need to know a little bit what your wire diagrams are, what you're looking at. What I did find really good is I've mounted the GPS unit under the tail and that works fine. It doesn't have to be mounted externally on the bike. So it's underneath the tail and I've got loads of GPS signal. You know, I was picking up like 12 different satellites. So there was no problem with, um, you know, losing GPS signal or acquiring GPS signal when the module was underneath within the rear of the bike. That worked fine. So there we go. I hope that's been of interest. I will be back in the garage fitting, I think, the link pipe and the power commander to the bike now. Another module to add to the bike. I couldn't put that on before the track day because it's only a 98 dB day at uh, Donington. I was contemplating not fitting the link pipe because I quite like the fact the bike is not too loud, not too obnoxious, but on track I've really noticed that below 6,000 revs it's very, very flat. And even with the Heeltech XRE torque limiter on, I couldn't really notice that much difference when that was fitted, being absolutely honest. So I definitely need a bit more bottom end. So I think I'm going to have to fit the link pipe. I'm going to have to fit the power commander because it's just a little bit lacking at the very bottom end of the rev range. So next job will be power commander, link pipe. And then I think I'll be more or less complete with this bike now for what I need to do to it you know, immediately. I was going to put a quick action throttle on it, but I've had trouble because the buttons and the modules all connected with the throttle grip on the GSX-R, so you've got to change the lock. So even though I do have a quick action throttle, um, I need some button, you know, I need to change all the button units as well. So it turns into a right ball leg, but I will be back for more action from the garage on the GSX-R very, very soon. See you later, guys.